this prehistoric planet. Paleo art and paleontology has always gone hand in hand. And, and paleo art has inspired, but the science, the hard science, has educated. And uh, I'd like to think that we are doing our part in paleo art, and pushing that boundary. Well, this series is about authenticity uh, on every level. So it's authentic in the way it's filmed. The animals are absolutely authentic and accurate in their depiction. Uh, you know, the structural depiction, you know, what they look like, but also what they do. Because the key to the series was not just showing dinosaurs, but about their behavior. Dinosaurs provided, a, 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 in, in my experience, a wholly unique challenge in that they are not fantastical. They are 100% real, and more importantly, for our program, it was so important that we got them right. Um, everything we did, every decision that we did, was based off of the best science and the best theories available to us. The mass, weight distribution, size of teeth, and how often they change their teeth and replace their teeth, all that stuff, the scales, the latest ideas of, of colors. Uh, from what I understand, there's, there's chemicals left in fossilized feathers that give you hints of what colors dinosaurs actually are. And if we've ever come up with an idea that hasn't really been supported by the science, we haven't gone with it. We think that many dinosaurs were very flamboyant, very show-offy animals. We show certain of these animals behaving in mating displays. We look at the behaviour of the animals that surround our extinct dinosaurs in the family tree, a technique called phylogenetic bracketing. We're able, on the basis of postures that we see in crocodilians and birds, to infer what was present in extinct dinosaurs. Should Tyrannosaurus rex have eyelids? Well, crocodiles and alligators have got eyelids and living birds have got eyelids. So we can be pretty confident that Tyrannosaurus rex would have eyelids too. And we use that method across the series in informing our decisions. T-Rexes have always been portrayed as very, very um, skeletal. Very, I think it's in part it was to make them feel very uh, monstrous and evil. But in fact, once we layered on all the muscles and fat and skin that would be required to sensate, like sustain that sort of mass and all that stuff, uh, ended up a very large dinosaur, and it looks very different than anything you've seen before. I think the best way to think about animators were puppets, were puppeteers, you know. So the asset team builds the puppet, the rigging team uh, attaches strings to that puppet for us to move, and animators move the puppet around. It's honestly a lot like playing with toys, you know, like, you know, like, just like when you're a kid, just like, you know, rah, it's gonna go over here, like, it feels like that. So this is a scene from the Desert Bloom sequence with Mononychus. It's a, it's a very highly specialized dinosaur. Um, we know that it lived in the desert and likes to hunt insects. And it has these um, little stubby little claws, and like the claws are like about seven and a half centimeters long. They're similar to like a pangolin or like an anteater where they were like, use them to dig into a termite mound. We really just try and filter in what we can see from birds into this. I came across a, a golden pheasant, which uh, was very spurty, like it like, you know, it would run quickly and then stop and then like cock its head and then run again. And so I felt like, you know, this kind of felt like this very long legged dinosaur with, uh, with these strange head gestures. So I really wanted to push that character for this, for this dinosaur. So here's the, the scene where we've got the log brought in along with the Mononychus and so like I will be grabbing these controls and like moving this guy along you know grabbing grabbing the foot and like taking a step or, or doing a jump um, and we will refine this like you know and show this to Dr. Darren Nash to see if we're following the science does does this um, make sense for the anatomical structure of the Mononychus. Once we've gotten the animation to a point that we're happy with then we send it to lighting department and the groom department and they, they'll light the scene, the fur gets put on the, on the dinosaur um, and they will, like compositing will make that dinosaur like fit in the environment. They are extraordinary animals with individual lives and struggles which, which apply in the way that they apply today. And so, you know, the, the universality of, of the struggles of animals is, uh, is a story that can be told irrespective whether you're telling it today or telling it 65 million years ago. It was an incredibly rich and diverse time. 
with multiple different environments, multiple different habitats, multiple different groups of animals doing really cool things.